Lord, you took me way back. That was a long time ago, man. But, you know, it was an accident that I, I, I can't, ran into that uh, uh, when I first met Sam. Um, and he was, they were preparing, the, the guy who was at the studio uh, was preparing him for his first record to transfer him from being a gospel singer to make him a pop singer. His name, the guy, the, the producer was named uh, Bumps Blackwell. Robert Bumps Blackwell. But I had gone there to Specialty Records. Specialty Records, anybody ever heard of Specialty Records? They're just, they're, they're funk now, they don't, they're not. Well, Specialty Records was way back, it was before Atlantic Records and other things that you might be familiar with. Uh, but it was back in the days when, uh, the early days of the independent. Uh, and so Sam Cooke was a gospel singer who sang with the, uh, what's the name of that group? Uh, you, you don't, no, you don't know him either, huh? He was singing with the, it was the Pilgrim Travelers. It was another one of those groups back, back that time. Anyway, he was singing with that gospel group. And, and uh, he was, he was, a, he was a, a rock star with the gospel people. I mean, he could, the way he could sing gospel stuff, touch the hem of his garment, became a big hit gospel song. You ever heard? No, you never heard. Y'all probably never heard none of that stuff. <laughs> anyway, uh, this, this A&R man, at, uh, especially Bumps Blackwell, felt that Sam could be a pop star if he, you know, if he, if they changed him, if he would sing secular music. And he was preparing him then, and he was going to do, he was going to let him do Summertime to break him into the pop record, pop, you know, whatever. Uh, but I went there, I went to Special Records because I had been trying to go to various record labels. I had just gone out of California, and I was trying to get, get another person that you all may not be thinking with is a cat named Arnett Coleman. Y'all familiar with him? Well, that was when he was, before he became the one you know. Because he used to drive a, a freight elevator on in one of the department stores at that time. He was still getting his acts together and all that stuff. But uh, uh, we had gone into a little demo place down in the ghetto to make, play, to record some of his uh, songs, his things that he had written. And they had assigned me to go out and see if they could, we could get a record deal. Well, I couldn't do that. I didn't know nothing about that. Anyway. So I went to Specialty Records. And the day that I went to bring that on that Cohen thing, that's when this guy was getting ready to do Sam Cooke the next day. So he didn't have time to listen to that. But he asked me, say, well, if you can help me get this session together, maybe I can have some time. And that's how I got associated with Sam Cook, because this guy assigned me to go look for something to put on the B side for summertime. And what I found was I didn't find it because Sam just had a bunch of little songs he had written. And uh, when you send me was in among those songs, so we I. I said, that nice sounds like something we could use for the B-side. That was going to be the, you know what the B-side is? Yeah. All right, yeah. After they finished the A-side the, the next day, he asked me, well, what y'all got for the B-side? I said, well, we got a little song here we're going to put on there. And uh, the only music I had to write was for background singers, uh, the background, if you ever heard that record. They got some singers on there. But they had hired those girls for for the summertime. But they were still there at the studio, so we said, might as well use them. So I wrote some stuff out for them. And um, we started taking it. After we got about it to the fourth or fifth take, the owner of the record label came in and he heard the, what we was doing, and he didn't like it. He thought it was... Too, too calm. 
he was a guy who had been used to gospel music and, and rhythm and blues. Uh, he was, had been very successful with that because he, he had hit on both gospel. He, he always used to tell me, say, man, the gospel pays our rent at the record company. But he had hit records with, with a guy named Lloyd Price, and Lloyd and Miss Claudia. And then he had got to the point he had a guy named Lil Richard. Y'all, oh, y'all heard, you know, <laughs> Lil Richard, well, Richard, Richard was tearing it up. You know, Richard had a lot of hits, man. All of them, Lucille and I forget all that stuff he had. So he was used to that. This owner was used to that kind of music. And he really loved it. That's what he loved. But when he heard what we had Sam doing, what this cat had Sam doing, he said, man, that ain't nothing. You can't have no food. Have it got him signed like a white boy. And, that, and that's, that's what he felt. He felt like this was too calm. This ain't no real, they say go make you get together. So that was the one on the B side. But it didn't go on there without a lot of fuss because Sam got upset and Bumps Blackwell got upset and they argued for a little while and they quit. Art Rupp, or I said I didn't want to call his name, that's the owner of the company. Art fired the singers because he thought that that was causing trouble because there was white people singing in the background. That's why he thought Sam sounded like that. I don't know why. Anyway, anyway, he fired them and he tried to take over and change it to make it and make it like a sort of a Fats Domino like or something. I don't know. But it was over for that day. The following day, uh, he made a deal with the, with the guy Bumps Blackwell. He said, "Man, if you think this is so good, in lieu of the money that I owe you." I'll give you the tapes, you can have them. So Bumps Black would say, I'll take the tapes, give me the tapes. And that's how the You, you Send Me came out on uh, Keen Records, if you know, I mean, you know, you wouldn't notice. I forget, I'm an old man, I forget that y'all are just young folks. You wasn't nowhere around when, Keen, when the record came out. But it didn't come out on special, it came out on a record name, a label named Keen Records. And it's still, Bumps was still thinking the summertime would be the record, but the disc jockey, some disc jockey down in, 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 in the hood, on his program turned it over one day and played this song, and the phone was lit up. You know, so he realized that, hey man, listeners, the audience likes this thing. And that's when it became the A side. It wasn't supposed to be the B side, but it became the A side. And that was the first time I was, I in, I was in contact with Sam. Uh, and I, he and I got to be pretty, pretty, pretty tight. Of course, uh, you know, uh, I came back to New Orleans and he went on up to, you know, he's, he went on up to stardom, you know, uh, to, uh, he got, I think it was Columbia or RCA, one of the big labels got him. And he began to have hit after hit on everything. He began to have all kinds of hits. And, uh, and he, we got to be close friends. And, and, and what we had in common really was both of us, he was very animal about trying to get a part of the business part, get into the business part of the music business, you know. He just didn't want to be a, a singer that made, you know, made big hit records and stuff like that. He wanted to own a, a record label. And he started a record label out there. 